For March the 4th, 2016, we talk about super hot and finicine, and we ask you if you've ever taken a break from gaming. Welcome to level 134. My name is Cole Ross. I'm Dennis Furia. I'm Jella Prendes. And I'm Ben Merkel. And you're listening to The Level. It's a podcast for people who love video games. Thank you so much for being patient with our week off. It was a last minute uh, scheduling snafu, but uh, it was cool to have a I had my first night off in a week or sorry. Yeah. And in, in, in a long time. And so I used that time to do some accounting. <laughs> oh, that's man. okay i i ended up yeah i ended up doing the same thing so <laughs> you gotta slow down this life in the fast lane is gonna kill you <laughs> that's what a lot of people are telling me um, they're gonna make the next american psycho movie about you cole <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh i've got all this time now i should i can get ahead on my books more accurately <laughs> i can catch up on my books but <laughs> but yeah no anything to anything to avoid the dark souls 3 spoilers the the press yeah. embargo lifted oh, today and the internet oh, is a fucking oh. nightmare yeah <laughs> i already oh, saw that that allison spoiled some stuff for herself too yeah. so she was pretty sad so yeah i'm not i'm not down yeah yeah so the worry isn't so much that somebody's going to like directly inflict that as violence on me or you know <laughs> on 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 our community it's more like oh my gosh did you see that so and so, and they're like, uh, I don't, I don't want to know that. Mm-hmm. I yes. like being surprised. Yeah, I need to, I need to like <laughs> the one place in my life I like being surprised. <laughs> <laughs> well, I need, I need to preserve that sense of wonder and awe in my voice as I, as I speak about these things for the first time. Well, you, you, know? you need those fresh eyes so that you can chug it in like a day and a half. Oh right, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I need those. Fr- I need, I need to go in unsullied and then just immediately ruin the game for me, <laughs> ruin the game for myself. Yeah. Um, oh well does anybody have any anecdotes they want to hit us with i'm kind of tempted to just do fake dark souls 3 spoilers now throughout the podcast <laughs> <laughs> See, that's didn't fun. we already try to do that last time anyway like predictions or something we did try and do the predictions and then there was also the uh the the spoiler cast that uh dennis did with murph that is still really funny <laughs> <laughs> the one from dark souls 2 I I still maintain that that is one of the most interesting game mechanics ever that mm-hmm. needs to exist somewhere where you you have a stat that as it goes up or down um puts you in different builds of the game. Mm-hmm. And so if you can reduce the game back far enough, you get certain glitches added back in that then open up other stuff and et cetera. Et cetera, et cetera. So. Yeah, they'd be a good way to handle uh, like like Bloodborne 2 with insight, like the higher your, the higher your insight goes, it goes full magic circle. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice oh well why don't we just get started then um let's see here we've got the usual kind of show for you the uh the brief the multiplayer and the grind and we're going to start with the brief the brief where we talk about things that are happening in the world of video games around us does anybody have a story that they want to volunteer first Ooh, ooh, pick me shall i go Okay, so this is actually kind of related to stuff you were doing recently, Cole, because you were streaming stuff. Yes. So I ended up finding a story that's about streaming. So there is a startup called Infinicine, and they are opening up their beta um, to, like, uh, a broader audience. They were in closed beta until now for their cloud-based streaming studio. So that's a thing that's going to be dropping sometime before the end of the year. And the whole point of it being cloud-based is, of course, that it would take less of your computer's resources to run because it's in the cloud and it's not on your computer trying to suck your computer's life out of it while you're trying to, (laughs) you know, get the game to go. So um, they're also working on apps for Xbox One and PS4 so that the gamers that are using the service won't have to buy extra hardware in order to stream so this is something that will kind of like uh well... yeah <laughs> yeah so you yeah. kind of don't already you kind of already don't have to buy extra hardware to stream on either of those right yeah well, they I both suppose... have twitch apps yeah well i don't know i suppose they're just trying to like uh do stuff to work around having to use as many resources on on whatever platform that they're on you know gotcha. um, okay yeah. i don't know what else they're going to be doing i'm sure they're going to do some more stuff to make it 
not just cloud-based, but make it um, even more accessible for console gamers versus, you know, the Twitch app or what yeah. have you. Well, so, I'm really happy that it's built for real people. So I, so I know that I am not a real person in these people's eyes. So that's good. <laughs> well, <laughs> they're, they're just more or less just trying to make it easier to stream and to stream mm -hmm. seamlessly without having to, you know, fiddle with every setting on the planet to get it to yeah. work right. Yeah, well, it's, um, uh, it's, it's like push button. Mm -hmm. It looks like mm -hmm. um, it, it definitely it definitely looks like uh, like an online cloud based browser version of like OBS. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So. So, yeah, they so, um, OBS is, you know, I love it now that I've gotten it to a place where I don't really have to mess with the settings. But yeah, it was some arcane magic when uh, when I first set it up. Yeah, yeah. there's definitely <laughs> especially with audio like there's there's no really good solution that doesn't involve Soundflower on the Mac. No, no, not at all. And now, like, with the new El Capitan update, even that doesn't really work. Yeah. It's where, like, you can install it, but it doesn't show up where it used to show up, but you can mm -hmm. still create it as an audio device, and then, mm -hmm. but then you can't adjust volume, so you kind of have to get all the volume set up the way you want it <laughs> before you turn on your... Like, it's just... It's it's whack. Yeah. So, would you say it's Wiggity Rack? Uh, Wiggity Rack, yes. Oh, yeah. sorry, damn, damn it, I was trying to do a Team Troll <laughs> Squad thing, but I, I, I misspoke. Fuck. Um, no, That's like okay. a, title, title, potential title. Okay. <laughs> sorry, not, not everyone has enough groove to say that correctly. <laughs> yes, I, I am distinctly lacking in groove. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but uh, this this could be interesting. Like, I, I guess what it's doing is just like grabbing the frame buffer and then sending that out, as opposed to doing like transcoding on the machine itself, and just offloading all of the transcoding onto those the, the the streaming machines. So if you're if it's just getting video and the the, the frame buffer and the audio stream, um, it doesn't matter. It would introduce just a little bit more lag. Um, but it would still stay in sync if they uh, did all of that on one machine on the other side. Yeah, so introduce a little bit of lag to the stream, not to the person playing. Right. Uh, so, so, so lag to the stream as opposed to lag between what you're doing and uh, what's what, mm -hmm. what. Yeah, no, this is this is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. How'd you find out about this, Jala? I looked on the internet. <laughs> 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 I wasn't looking for a specific thing. It's just how yeah. do I? How do you find anything on the internet? You just I'm look just, around. I'm just curious. Or things just kind of crop up. I don't know. You some like kind, it, <laughs> some some kind of some kind of place or source or like some kind of engine for no, for inquiries or n no. Literally, the way that I search for stories is I do not go to any of the gaming sites. I just plug into Google video game news and I look through whatever news yeah. comes up. Huh. From just video type. game news and that's why i get such a variety it's not just release dates because i'm finding shit from all over the place this was like yeah. you know like the url i found this at was like built into sh built in chicago.org because it's a chicago-based startup so I mean, <laughs> you know no. like i i just found it and the title looked interesting so i clicked on it and i said hey streaming that's a thing that a lot of the listeners do and also cole has been doing and yeah. dennis has been doing and i tried it once but i'm on wi-fi dsl so like i'm never going to get it to work right on my mm -hmm. current settings so <laughs> yeah no i <laughs> just know, i, I just fire up siri and say show me the best thing you got <laughs> <laughs> impress me <laughs> <laughs> huh well yeah this is a good find jala yep yeah uh, Dennis, how about you? Yeah, so my my story is for all uh, Uncharted lovers out there, um, and it should, I think, hit uh, with this with this episode going live for everyone in time for people to take advantage of it, which is the multiplayer for Uncharted Four: A Thief's End is going to be available in beta form to everyone with a PS4 this weekend. So that's, uh, even, that's even if they don't have PlayStation Plus. Ooh, does not say on that one. I'm going to guess you have to have PlayStation Plus, although I don't know, like it's beta. I, I don't know if they're thinking about that case. So mm -hmm. maybe worth a shot. Let us know, Ben. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, they, they did a, a test before, but it was only for people who owned um, the complete Nathan Drake collection or whatever that's called um, with Uncharted 1 and 2. And uh, now everyone can have it whether or not they've owned a previous game. Hmm. Yeah. So exciting stuff. Um. Damn it! Now I can't move forward while without acknowledging that three exists. 
Oh, I You're backed good. myself into a corner. Damn yeah. it. Okay, fine. Uh, three. The, the multiplayer on three was very refresh, refreshingly different from most multiplayer out there. Uh huh. Um, just in how conducive it was to um, movement uh, and hand to hand combat, while still having a lot of weapons focus. So, I, I kind of feel like Uncharted 3's multiplayer was kind of what Brink wanted to be. Mm-hmm. Only like third person and a lot more fun. So, um, I have I had a lot of fun playing uh, Uncharted Three multiplayer. Multiplayer. Um, yeah, people so know, I, man. I'd Don't be interested to <laughs> to try Uncharted Fours. Huh? Yeah. Well, yeah. Sign up for that if you can. I mean, there are a couple of good parts of Uncharted Three, but yeah. The the only part I remember of it, and maybe this is just because I only play the beginning, is the uh, is the fight in the kitchen, where you where you bash that guy's head into a fridge for a little bit. Yep, or hit a guy with the with the fish. Yep, that was good. Can, can you beat people good. up with pool balls too? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I, I feel like that section kind of made a promise that the rest of the game didn't quite deliver on. It was pretty obviously like designed for a uh, like a vertical slice, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think probably the best part about that uh, that scene was the article that tied it into The Last of Us. So there's like a <laughs> oh, sure, newspaper yeah. clipping on the yeah. <laughs> about the cordyceps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh. Ben, your story and mine are going to be pretty linked up. Sorry, I didn't put mine into the uh, into the into the robot there, but uh, we can we can kind of tag team this because last week there was a Pokemon announcement, and uh, who was the MC? Uh, Drew Barrymore. <laughs> Go for I I just wanted to share the story because I did not understand it at all. Charlie Charlie's <laughs> angel herself. Drew mm-hmm. Barrymore is a Pokemon. <laughs> one of the one of those gross ones, like uh, like Mister Mime. That's, that's just a person. She doesn't evolve. <laughs> well, no, because she's already achieved perfection. Oh, way Aww. to bring it back. <laughs> nice, cool. I mean, you know, the, far, oh, be, far be it for me to say something mean about a famous person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so con- yeah. T- continue and give more details because I don't, I don't, under- I don't understand either. So the way the article's phrased is they call it a private Pokemon soiree that's going to happen in LA, and apparently there's going to be like uh, pop up Pokemon shops in LA for this month hmm. to celebrate the 20th anniversary, and then there's going to be tie-ins to other stores like uh, Toys R Us or GameStop. Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> they they said that Pikachu will be attending the private soiree. Oh, holy shit, they got him? He's been like, he's been a recluse for years. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I heard he was like Bill Murray, where you have to call an 1-800 number to get a hold of him. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. just a phone that intermittently rings and he decides whether or not to pick it up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it doesn't have caller ID, and that's the interesting part. Right, right. He's not screening like, you. He just He just decides whether or not that's the call he's going to take. He's, he's screening for whether or not he feels like interacting with another human. Beyond that, he doesn't care. I'm pretty you just sure said Pikachu's a human. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that it's just a recording on the other side because how many different permutations of Pikachu can can he actually say? <laughs> oh, oh, should we start now? Because we're going to be here for a while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of emotion as the animes have shown us. <laughs> Someone gets paid millions of dollars to do Pika different ways. Yeah, I think they just got him once and then they pitch shifted it. It's like a, like how they recorded Roadrunner. <laughs> someone someone refers to Pika and Chu as their craft. All right. <laughs> oh man. Uh but that is not the only so so that's that that's coming up to celebrate the uh the anniversary. The stories that I have here are about new Pokemon games, <gasps> um, including an announcement that uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon are coming out this year. Uh, no real details about them other than it's sun and moon. They keep on defying my expectation that there are no more pairs. <laughs> <laughs> like I thought that they would run out like, okay, like Ruby and Sapphire. That's, that's pretty good. It's kind of blue and blue and yellow or blue, <laughs> blue and red, but okay. I'll, I'll allow it. But then they just kept going. <laughs> Diamond and Pearl. It's a bit, of, it's a bit of a tenuous link. I think that if you put Pokemon before two different words, they will immediately be linked up. <laughs> Pokemon is like it's 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 a like a like a covalent bond. I was, I, yeah, it's, about, it's, I about said a covalent mon, but did you did you guys try Pokemon Router and Pokemon Modem? It was <laughs> <laughs> oh that's uh that's like the Pokemon version of uh they re they, they reskin Mega Man Network Battle, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why has there been not Pokemon Yin and Pokemon Yang? Mm. Uh, right. 
I don't know. Huh. So how many Pokemon are they up to now? Oh, in terms of numbers? It has to be yeah. like like 800, something like that. <laughs> okay. Yo, it's funny. Oh, I have man. no reference for the Pokemon universe, but I thought 800 too. <laughs> like, I just don't know. <laughs> the last count I actually saw was like 350. I don't know how many there actually are, though. Oh, there was like 351 in the original group, right? Oh, really? yeah, 151. Yeah, well, it was 150, I thought. Yeah, yeah 151. It was, it was one. <laughs> yeah, 151. Yeah. So I think after after gold and silver, they had uh, the, they, they had about 300, but each one of them added 100 to 150. Right now, we're looking at 722. It gets Holy a, crap! It gets a little bit. It gets a little bit. Is, let, let, let's just say tricky because they keep on adding new ones as promotional things. So just have you just, seen? Have it's you like seen the, the periodic things? table of elements. <laughs> <laughs> well, there there is a site or, or a Tumblr or something like that where it's like drawing Pokemon from memory, and it's really funny because like the crap that comes out the other side is bad. <laughs> that's that's what, that's one of my favorite things to do is have somebody draw Homer Simpson from memory. <laughs> like I'll just hand him an index card and ask him to do that because it's funny. Um, uh, there's also like Tumblr's or at least uh, on 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 Google Image Search. Usually within the, within the first page of results, you'll see pictures of Pokemon with Nicolas Cage faces. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it's great. I love I, I love a list of monsters. Was that when they did the tie-in with Con Air for Pokemon? No, it's Mon Air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Alley oop. <laughs> but but yeah. Um in addition to that, uh because of because of this anniversary, they are re-releasing red, blue, and yellow on uh on the virtual console. Oh, and cool. uh those are all like all of them are going to be uh compatible with uh with the Pokemon Bank. Nice. So you can What's- What's the Pokemon Bank? That's the cloud storage for your Pokemon, so you don't have to have like two DSs or two uh, two different machines to trade and get all the Pokemon in one place. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Also known as a way to get five dollars a month out of parents. <laughs> <laughs> Mon Air. <laughs> Patting yourself on the back, are we? No, no. It's a, that was a team effort. <laughs> <laughs> multiplayer now it is time for the multiplayer where we ask you a question and you respond or we ask the nice people a question um let's see here dennis what is the question that you ask them yeah um this question was not lent inspired but i'm gonna like retrofit it and say that it was Mm -hmm. (laughs) which Mm -hmm. is have you ever given up on games for a time uh either related to time or money or just losing interest uh and if so what brought you back this is a this is a really good question. Um, my usual joke is to say that I gave up sacrifice for Lent, um, but that is <laughs> that's a little bit. It's a kind of, kind of, kind of daddy. It's a it's a little a little daddy. I approve. Um, <laughs> uh, but I'll pick us up here with Ollie, who says I did. I left gaming uh, behind for a while, from about uh, 2004 to 2008. Not that I really grew out of it, but more that I had spent so much time on it, and I wanted to try other things. But the game that got me back in was Arkham Asylum. I saw it at a friend's house, and I couldn't get over how it looked, how the story developed, and I knew that I had to have it. It was everything I wanted from a game, and it showed me how far the medium had come. That's Smiley. a high note to come back in on. <laughs> yeah, Arkham Asylum yep. is great. Mm-hmm. That, that really might be my favorite of those games in the, in the, in the grand analysis. That's not a bad choice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> huh. Hmm, let's see here. Uh, Jala, what does Steven say? Steven says, I did for about seven hours last night. It was the worst. That's a popular comment. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was so bad that he went unconscious while he was without them. Yeah, well, you right? know, <laughs> dream, dreams is like games. <laughs> dreams is games that you uh, that you design throughout the day without realizing it. It's <laughs> true. Then depending upon if you have control of your dreams, lucid dreaming and stuff, you might be in control of that too. But Ooh. sometimes who's in charge of QA? <laughs> but something sometimes you have dreams about games and that is disappointing. <laughs> like oh gosh, Tetris dreams. Tetris stress dreams, the worst. Oh gosh. Yeah. yeah Dr. Mario this, dreams. Uh... <laughs> what was that, Jala? There was this drawing somebody had posted on my page once upon a time that was uh it said 
hell, and it was Tetris blocks falling into a curved bottom. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was pretty funny. Yeah. <sighs> Every once in a while, I have a coworker who likes to send me an animated GIF of somebody like uh, building up a huge, like intricate thing in Tetris, and then like at the very last minute, it goes in slow motion and then zooms in as he's about ready to drop the line, and then boop at the. <laughs> He turns it sideways and it blocks it off. He just knows oh. that it's going to piss me off. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, ben, what does Kilo say? Kilo says, in sixth grade, I got suspended in the first day of school. My parents took away all gaming privileges for a month. Games were really all I had then, so I started to go stir crazy uh, in a way that must have scared them. Uh, <laughs> I can go without now, but it's scary to look back at uh, to when I felt I had so little. Dude, what the hell do you do to get su- suspended on the first day, man? Like, what? <laughs> what kind of... Okay, never mind. I mean, can you come back naked? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> and you think, oh, this is just a stress dream, and then it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no Tetris. This can't be a stress dream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. The first day. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh. Dennis. They just wanted to make a statement with someone. That's what it was. This is, oh, yeah. It's, it's teacher's, re- the teacher's approach is, you know, you got to smack down the first kid that steps on our line. Yeah, it's, it's reverse prison. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis, what does Roop say? Roop says, I've left gaming a few times. During my younger days, I put a, almost all my free time into our band at the time. And he, he sends the link to it, so check that out. Uh, but the most recent one was a little under two years ago. I had a blog about video games, so I had to replay games a lot so I could give a truthful opinion about those. Also, I played the shittiest games in Desura, etc., just to make a blog. Making two lengthy posts a week and at the same time going through the hardest courses on my path in the University of Applied Sciences really got to me, even though, I only, had a, even though only a handful of people read the blog. I put so much effort into it. After making the decision to quit the blog, I didn't play for a few months. It was tabletop games that got me interested in video games again. Yay, tabletop. I I miss tabletop. I wish I had people to play tabletop with, but, like, they're all far away. Mm. And I know you can Mm. schedule that kind of a thing online, but scheduling adults is (laughs) Really hard. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I think that, I mean, that's the fine line that you walk on when, you know, you're using your enjoyment of the hobby to create other content. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a problem that's probably unique to the people on this show, but <laughs> kind of checking yourself and being like, okay, am I actually enjoying what I'm playing here? Or am I doing it just because I'm hoping it will make something interesting? Yeah. Um, and, and keeping that in balance. I mean, it's, it's strange to see this from like, from a different perspective, mm-hmm. right? You just don't usually see a, yeah, you, I just, it's not something I see a lot in, in other people, even though it is categorically what I do. I will say that I'm, I, I play more games now than I, than I, at any other point in my life. Hmm. Yeah. That, I know. play a larger variety than I used to play, mostly because, you know, when you only have X amount of money and there's only X number of games to rent mm-hmm. available to you back in the day on a console, you know, versus now with Steam and bundles and yeah. whatever, you just have too much. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's uh that that that's strange. I'm I'm curious about this. Um, when he uh, when he had those younger days, almost all of his free time into that about uh, two years ago. Huh. So that's during the lifetime of the of the of the shows. Hmm. Be curious, like if if that still exists, send me a link, group. I'm 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 curious what kind of work you did there. Um, Phil writes saying, "Well, for a few months, I was stuck in basic training and couldn't get anywhere near a video game. That counts, right?" Other than that, I can't think of any deliberate time where I've given up gaming. Just a few weeks here and there where I didn't have the time or energy due to other obligations. Well, where Phil, Phil Holmes dares. <laughs> yes. That's that's a... Nobody else gets this joke except for Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I know that it is a joke. Yes. Um, there's an image of a soaring eagle with Phil Holmes' head on it. <laughs> <laughs> naturally and, yeah. nobody knows who and, made it it just appeared one uh, day. no 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 i i made it for reasons uh <laughs> pertaining to a conversation on twitter long long ago but it crops up in the slack channel sporadically <laughs> so surprised that's not a a, a a very small hard to interpret emoji by now <laughs> <laughs> yeah it would be ridiculously hard to figure out what it yeah. is yeah no, I, I, I think that, that that second paragraph there about just kind of like, oh, just a few weeks here and there, that's just yeah. a break. 
you know yeah i think everybody has a rhythm where they where they where they not fall out of love but it's like oh your your interest is elsewhere it, well it, if if you count like being busy with other stuff and therefore not having time to do stuff like that's been the last couple of weeks for me mm-hmm. like i checked on steam and i'm like oh like four hours worth of games in the last two weeks oops mm-hmm. you know <laughs> But luckily, I usually have a backlog of stuff to talk about. Yeah. So. <laughs> Jalo, what does Graham say? Graham says, ever since I first started playing video games, there has only been a few days where I haven't played any games at all. And I've never been outright disinterested in video games, except once. The lead up to Mother 3's release was probably the most hyped I had ever been with a video game. Actually playing it, though, was an absolute letdown. Hmm. So much so that I quit playing games for a few days and invested more time into other hobbies. I got over it by remembering that StarCraft was pretty bala, and playing that game revitalized my love. A few days? Huh. Yeah, it's like, you know, Steven's <laughs> reply of a few hours, man. Like, <laughs> I suppose. I just... Huh. It'll, it'll be weird when I get to my answer. They need a game <laughs> IV. <laughs> Yeah, huh. That's the first person I've heard being really disenchanted with Mother 3. Like, I've heard people say, like, yeah, it's not as good, but to to, to make you question your love of the medium. That's got to say something about the hype level right there. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, the hype. That's not, that you know, make... maybe the, yeah, maybe the experience wasn't the greatest, but the hype will make that come crashing down way worse. Yeah. Huh. Ben, what does Amanda say? Amanda says, I gave up on Fallout 4 for a bit because my expectations were way too high. And I played through Coder on my Kindle. A nice old Republic on my Kinder. Kindle. Uh, I'm enjoying Fallout 4 a lot more now that I waited. Generally speaking, I don't tend to finish video games very often. Or if I do, it is after picking up and putting down games for over a period of months or even years. I hear you, lady. Because <laughs> I often do that myself. Except now that I've gotten to, into this habit of playing short games. Or games that I can co-op and finish co-op. If I can <laughs> co-op it, I'll finish it. Yeah. So huh yeah well well, like good good on you guys for being able to put down a game and ever get back to it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. i do i i never really fully drop anything that i pick up unless yeah. i just flat out tell you i'm done with it like <laughs> I, I will go back to it and i'll give it another shot you know and even if if i you know start it and it just does not hit me right like to the moon i'll go back to it sometime yeah it may be a long time from now but i'll get back <laughs> to it eventually you yeah, know, and well, then I'll the, be like, yeah, I, I can see it now. Like when okay. the sequel comes out. Yeah, right. <laughs> we talked about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Dennis, what does Brian say? Brian says, not as an extended period, but I have a tradition where every time I beat a game, I do something other than gaming for the rest of the day. That's pretty yeah, good. I kind of like this, especially if you're happy with the way things go. Mm-hmm. Like if you liked the ending of the game, I think there's something to kind of... <laughs> sitting in that for a bit yeah but like if you beat it at 11 o'clock at night <laughs> <laughs> well you know gee that's that's a lot of woo-hoo, good job <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it, it calls it calls to mind like there there's a writer i forget specifically who but it's a it's you know well like when you it's always writers who have these like work practices that always seem so bizarre from the outside but mm-hmm. it was a writer who you know he wrote from let's say 7 a.m to 11 a.m every single day right mm-hmm. And it didn't matter if he finished a book at 8.30, he would pick up another piece of paper and start the next book. Because, huh. God damn it, he wrote from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. every day. Hmm. So I'm transferring that to games. I'm imagining somebody just, like, joylessly <laughs> finishing a game and then joylessly doll-eyed, just moving his mouse over to the next <laughs> icon and starting it. <laughs> 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 that sometimes happens. I can attest to this. There have been times I have pushed through a game just because other people like it and and, and or it was given to me. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, and then I finished it. <laughs> and there was no joy to be had from the experience, but it is done. And now I will go play something I want to play. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. it's it's funny because I always ever I always finish games late at night. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. Like you know, <laughs> half an hour before you go to bed. Good job. Well, but no, I think I think there's some natural momentum to that. Where if you you can kind of sense when you're close to the end, and so you'll always kind of lean in to finish a game. Yeah. So if yeah. you know if you start playing games at nine o'clock at night, there's only really, really you know two hours until you can consider it late at night. Mm-hmm. Um, and so no one's going to be like, oh, I've got a half hour left. I'm going <laughs> to put this down until another day. Yeah. 
No, definitely. Like just the the, the 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 gut instinct that I have for completion. I wouldn't call myself a completionist, but just kind of like, man, if I can cross this off my list, who mm-hmm. boy, that's gonna be a sweet feeling. <laughs> oh. Um David writes in saying, Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Even during, the, <laughs> even during the deepest, darkest corners of new parenthood, I found time to game. People may make uh, people may make addicted to games jokes, uh, but as someone who stooped as low as playing Clash of Clans because it was uh, because I was up often enough for their timers to be a non-issue, huh. I can say it's legit. <laughs> That's funny, huh? It is. I was actually very surprised as a new par- parent that I, I felt like I had more time to game almost than before um just because i was consistently like he's describing up at odd hours mm-hmm. where i'm really doing nothing more than kind of waiting <laughs> do, um so do you do you find that that changes as as, uh, as your kid gets more mobile uh definitely definitely during the day yeah but you know luke luke still goes to bed before eight every single night mm-hmm. um so logistically <laughs> you know there's there's still a wide open swath where i'm I'm kind of on yeah. my own uh, mm-hmm. every night anyway. Yeah. Now I'm sure that'll change as he gets older and wants to stay up later. Yeah. Um, but for now it's, it's just meant that the gaming is in a more focused window rather yeah. than necessarily less. And it's a swath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, and like, like how much would you say that like you're helped out by the fact that Jen likes to play games too? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's definitely being able to just unwind together that way mm-hmm. is, is really good. Yeah. Um, it's it's nice because you don't have to compromise between you know wife child and game yeah. yeah you don't feel like you're chasing anyone out of the room yeah hmm, well that's delightful uh let's see here jala what does mike say mike says i never outright quit but like most young adults actually is 26 just adult <laughs> <laughs> You're as young as you feel, bud. All right. I think I'm still categorized as an entitled millennial burn boy by media, at least. The constraints of money and free time make you le- uh, make you more choosy about games. The real highlights always draw me in, like your whichever souls or an Undertale or Witcher 3. But unless a game really hits on my preferences, I'll sooner play nothing than play something that feels lukewarm. I hate to think I'm missing out on some fascinating experiences, but all of life is the whole, I saw my life branching out before me, blah, blah, Sylvia Plath thing. So I try not to mourn for games not played. Yeah. Down that path lies that Twilight Zone episode where, you know, there was time now, there was time. And your glasses (laughs) can break and yeah, it's terrible. Hmm. Yeah, there's plenty of games, especially like, you know, big franchises that I just have never freaking played in my life. Like, I might have seen somebody else play them, you know, and watched them play the thing, but I've never played it before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, that's fine. Like, I will admit, Cole, I have never (laughs) played Silent Hill. I have only ever watched someone play Silent Hill. I've been in the room (laughs) when they have played it. I have not myself played a Silent Hill game. Yeah. Have you seen the movie? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, like I watched that one and that was in the theaters. And I, like I said, I, I was in the room the whole time the game was being <laughs> played. But, you know, like I don't feel I need to go back and play it because I already saw it happen. It's yeah. fine. It's cool. You know? <laughs> but it is interesting that sometimes like a let's play can fulfill the experience of playing a game, even though mm-hmm. you're not the one controlling it. Mm-hmm. Well, depending upon the type of game, like there are games where it is enough based on the mechanics that I feel like I need to go back and play that. Or maybe it has so many different branching paths and different things you can choose that I feel I want to go back in and have that experience. But a lot of times I can watch somebody else play the game and be cool with it. Or if it's something like Azure Dreams, I can, you know, like I used to go back and forth with my boyfriend of the time and I would play for a while and then pass out laying my head on his lap and then he would play for a while and then pass out and you know we would just tap (laughs) out and play the same game you know back and forth between the two of us so you know and just watch each other play and then you know like wake up i got to like floor 35 or whatever oh that's (laughs) awesome z go back yeah yeah Yeah, it's 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 weird with with streaming and let's plays and other kinds of like passive ways to enjoy games i'm curious to see like if those ebbs and flows are going to be as pronounced, huh? Let's hear. Let's do. Uh, let's do two more. Uh, ben, what does uh, what does Chase say? 
Chase says, it was less giving up, but there was an ebb and flow. Hey, that's on the mind. Uh, for much of my young life. Uh, while we always had an NES and Game Boys in the house, we totally missed the Super NES. Even with the N64, I split my time between reading and gaming, with reading taking a healthier portion of my time, in more way than one probably. As I got older, <laughs> games took the place of books as the thing to talk about, uh, so reading became a secondary hobby, with games reigning supreme. Yeah. Hmm. That's an interesting concept that, that we're to the point now of like, I just keep up with the game, so I got something to talk about at the water cooler. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like TV, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's, it's nice that it's big enough to, to occupy that space now. Yeah. Um, and Dennis, round, round us out with Sam. Yeah, Sam says, only if you count that I didn't have a Nintendo or home computer until I was five or six. Being in a situation where I don't have access to my computer or consoles for a long period of time just means hundreds of hours of Pokemon. <laughs> Yep, understandable. No, you always have it. There's always Pokemon. There's always money <laughs> in the banana stand. One for each Pokemon. <laughs> there's always money in the banana stand, and there's, there's always, always Pokemon. Pokemon. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. It's a, this is this is a poke heavy episode. Um, really? It's on the brain. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like some kind of prion. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do mine, uh, just because it's relative. It's not inexplicable, but like. No, it has a big difference. Uh, late, uh, late high school and early college, I played far fewer games. Um, <laughs> Is that because I was playing a bunch of games in the dorm room? No, no, it was, <laughs> it was it, like mm-hmm. it was um, honestly for for like that period um, up through like early two thousand seven, watching you guys play games and you know doing like pass the controller kind of stuff was the most game that I really played. Right. Hmm. Um, okay. but like from like 2004, I like, I, I could probably even mark it like when Halo two came out and that whole group of friends that I had in high school kind of dissolved most of my like frenetic game playing from like just the holdover days of like late PlayStation era RPGs and the early PS two era, you know, kind of frenzy of like new stuff and new game types and kind of things really languished and the, and the, release of the xbox 360 didn't really do much of anything there was a little bit of a blip with oblivion but like i was straight up like mostly mostly tied up with like high school stuff you know girlfriends and reading and you know show choir and stuff like that and so a lot of that took the like took a back seat aside from like a little bit of uh like pc gaming kind of stuff right like either playing like like that was around the period that i played like all of the missed games (laughs) you know oh, sure, yeah. um in order and it was around time i played like half-life 2 but like everything just kind of fell off nothing nothing reached the pitch of those early 2000s with uh with like playstation or rpgs uh, honestly until un- until like after the 360 generation started picking up did uh did rock band get you back into gaming oh for sure yeah okay. that, like that like that that's that's a big part of it that like got me into the habit of playing games every day yeah, so cool. that was that was that was mine. Like late late high school, kind of coinciding with the waning of the PS2 era and the the the, the beginning doldrums of 360. Uh, Jala, how about you? Well, yeah, I fell out of games for a while, and I played games like a freak all through all of my younger days, all through high school, all through college. It was actually when I was out on my own and. Uh, I had just gotten past a very long relationship that broke up and most of my gaming systems at that time were like communally owned between the two of us. We both shared and bought things and he ended up taking a good chunk of the systems with him. But at the same time, not only did I miss all of these systems and not want to rebuy them, but then I was also starting to change my nutrition and starting to do physical fitness. And then I became like, I got so freaking ripped that Mm -hmm. I ended up being a fitness instructor and the people that I knew who did fitness stuff, they were the people I was hanging out with more and they didn't really play games, most of them. So I didn't play games again until my sister, who, you know, this whole time has been playing games, got me onto Steam on my PC, at which point I got back into playing games primarily as co-op, as like a communal thing, which is why communal games are usually like, you know, in any media. Like I stopped watching TV a long time ago, too. And like I only watch stuff if I'm doing it as a social thing. So that's why co-op games or shorter games are usually more my thing than 
um, you know, like the longer winded things is just because the way that my training works and the way that, you know, my art and my day job and all that goes, like it's just packed full of stuff and it's easier for me to do bite sized things or social types of interactions. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like, uh, like one preoccupation replaced another. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much like it just shifted from, you know, being, uh, in, in one place, sitting down, consuming media to turning around and making media, you know, like making art, writing stories, doing things like that, and then doing physical fitness and physically, you know, doing other things with mm -hmm. my time other than just like my relaxation at that point would be to visit with people or to meditate or to read a book or something. Yeah. You know, so. Hmm. Um, ben, how about you? So I was trying to think of a time. I don't really think I've ever gone on a hiatus. I think the only equivalent is I've gone a long time playing like a single game. So I remember there was like maybe a six month period of time where I was just playing Modern Warfare 2. I wasn't really interested in other games besides that. And consequently, I had not a lot to contribute to the podcast. <laughs> but uh, but I think that's about it. I don't think there's ever been a time where I've like went cold turkey or specifically tried to give up a game. I'm curious because if we framed this question in a way that said mm, accepting times like <laughs> include as a hi uh, as a hiatus anytime you stopped playing every game except um, uh, World of Warcraft, right? Because <laughs> because because that's a that's a kind of hiatus itself, right? Maybe I don't know. I haven't played it. Yeah, well, no, but I mean, just but just like. Uh, you, you know, I'm I'm going to play this game to the exception of everything else, and I feel like that stops that stops being like, oh, I, I'm experiencing a whole bunch of new stuff. And yes, I am I am totally value, valuing novelty above all else here. But like, just uh, like for me, when I've had those when I've had those preoccupations with MMOs or like other games that are kind of that appointment viewing, to the ex it, it, it blocks a bunch of other stuff out. Okay, am I a crazy person? No. Well, no. not for this reason. <laughs> uh, Dennis, how about you? Yeah, I, I think the only time that comes to mind for me, other than, um, you know, what Sam said about not having one until I was a couple years old, um, was when it was right when I was moving into my current house from my apartment and David and I got robbed and my PS3 got stolen. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, and so I was kind of without a system um, and in a new place, and there was plenty of things to keep me busy with house projects and moving in general, mm -hmm. yeah. um, that that was kind of a, a break. Um, and I think it wasn't, I forget what time of year that was. It was in the fall. It really wasn't until Christmas when Jen gave me another PS3 as a present um, that I kind of came back around to gaming. Yeah. Yeah. See, like I didn't get a new console after my consoles flew out the door. Uh, and so like, I, although I got a PS3 at the end of 2014, I don't really play it too much because I've been playing PC since, you know, like I got back into gaming. So mm -hmm. most everything I can either emulate on my, you know, PC, or I already have like one of the older systems, at least a couple of them, you know, so either that, or of course you can get it on GOG or steam or something. So I just never got back into consoles. Not just because, not like I hate consoles. I just didn't sink the money didn't have in. Like that was gonna push you. You there, know, yeah. yeah. I mean, like I, again, social gaming is my thing these days. So like, you know, although yes, I can play online on a console. I can also do that on PC. So why am I gonna buy a console if I can already do that with my current hardware? You know, like short it's not really. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> go ahead. I was going to say, short topical interjection. Apparently, uh, PS4, there's going to be PC crossplay for them coming up. That was a new story I saw, but I didn't well, mention. Yes. They already have that with stuff like Rocket League. You can play with PS4 or PS whatever, some mm -hmm. PlayStation or another. I don't know which one, but whatever. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Hmm. Well, thank you, everybody, for uh, for writing in with uh with your responses if you want to participate in those go to facebook.com slash the level podcast and uh check out um those prompts when they go up usually on tuesday afternoons <laughs>
the grind. Now it is time for the grind, where we talk about the games we've been playing over the past, well, here it's going to be like two weeks now. Um, Jala, since it's been the longest since you've been here, I'm going to defer to you. It hasn't been the longest since I've been here. I was nope. on the last time we recorded. Oh, you, 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 were on, you, were on the listen, you, you were on the Listener Hostel episode? I suppose. Maybe. Yes, 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 I was, because I okay. was saying this is a very hostile episode. What is wrong with it? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then you have Vim and Vinegar and everything. Yeah, I said that. Oh, well, can't I just defer to you for no other that's, reason that's, then? Yes, you can absolutely do okay. that, but I was just going to say. It's been a long time, Jala. Don't worry. <laughs> well, I finished Sniper Elite 3 with Sam. Yeah. All of the DLC, because we finished the main game before, and we finished the DLC now. So the DLC was cut up into two different parts. There was a single Kill Hitler mission, which was really lame. It didn't even have a cutscene, and the actual level was like half the size of a normal level, and there wasn't anything exciting about it, really. It's, it's obligatory in a, it's in a just, sniper yeah, it's, it's like contractually, you have to have it in there. Well, and then the Save Churchill, it was a three-part DLC with long levels, which were cool. They were good levels. Um, the, no Churchill in any of them because, you know, like Churchill's off somewhere else and you're just like, you know, keeping the bad guys down so that way they don't have the chance to go find him and kill him, you know. Um, but, like, it, they were they were good levels. Um, it ended with a sniper battle, which... It was really funny because, like, after playing stuff like Metal Gear Sniper Battles and then, like, playing this one, I'm just like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but, you know, that that's okay. Um, it was still pretty fun. I like the fact that in Sniper Elite 3, they do give you a little bit of play insofar as ways to solve issues. Like, say, for example, at one point, you have to fight a tank and you can actually, if you can hit the tank from where you are before it triggers that battle you can actually take down the tank before you get to the battlefield and not have even have to worry about you know being engaged with it you know face to face and having to sneak around and, and whatever like so i had a panzer shrek and i was just like blow that motherfucker up and <laughs> which, uh, which of down course it went is a tank and, tape like ta a, a tank shaped like shrek yeah <laughs> so anyway um so yeah, like I, I I beat that with Sam and that was cool. We had to do the last part several times because the the save point for that was way the hell back at the basically at the beginning. So like if you failed at the end of it, you had to go back. And then there were stupid things happened. Like I, I fell off of a bridge when I hit the space bar to jump and I, I didn't jump <laughs> and other things like that. And I'm like, Really? Fuck you, Gabe. I'm so mad. <laughs> but um Anyway, the, the best thing was the line at the end of the game, which was, you know, like, you, the, the Sniper Elite games have such cheesy dialogue. It was, Churchill's job is to save lives, and my job is to take them, or something stupid like that. And I was just like, <laughs> yeah. okay, whatever, guy. This is this is awesome. But the, the, the villain you had to fight in the Churchill DLC was a guy named Raub Vogel, um, which basically means, like, a bird of prey. And he had, like, a super cool metal mask for no fucking reason over his face <laughs> yes, and you do. that's it and, <laughs> and that's it there were ghillie suit guys that, that's all i got to say about that but did but, the metal mask make it so you couldn't headshot him like <laughs> no i shot him in the face a bunch of times it's just, he was a boss, and you're like you know like i found him and you know like i was like shoot 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 oh my fucking god die already ding, ding, ding. yeah right <laughs> <laughs> So he's like best $5 I ever spent. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, so anyway. it's one half of army of two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was my experience with that. It was, it, as long as you understand that the story is really not the focus of this game whatsoever, right. you're just derping around shooting dudes and having fun. You're good to go. And that's what I was doing with Sam. And it was, it was, um, understandably fun. Um, I think we're going to be going to um, the Nazi zombie trilogy next, which is more or less from what I have seen, basically left for dead, but with more headshots type of thing. Okay. So, so yeah, like nice. Nazi zombies and you shoot them and survival thing. As, yeah. as, as so, happens. Yeah. Yeah. So whatever, like that'll be a thing I'll talk about sometime after we play <laughs> some. Anything about that before I, I move on? I, I enjoyed can, it. Can you give me a, like like a like a short recap of how co op works in this game? Because I have a vague recollection of saying, "Oh, is one of you the spotter?" and you said no. 
No, like there's dude and then dude with slightly different hair color. <laughs> <laughs> and you go, you are dropped in the level and you can act however you want to. Like Sam and I would split up and, you know, go in different directions a lot of times. And, you know, meanwhile, he'd go off one direction. I go off in the other direction. We'd just start taking dudes down. And then one of us would be bleeding out because somebody shot him. And be like, okay. fuck, where the hell are you? <laughs> you kind, know? kind of a spy versus spy situation. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm sure you could do the whole, like, spotter type thing where one of you is just sitting full-time binocular or whatever but we didn't do it that way we really didn't even snipe most of the time we just like went up and shot fools in the face with like our rifles just whatever just blasting through everything i mean we started by trying to snipe and, and do all that but given the time constraints that we had and just the level in, of investment that we had in the game it's not like we were trying to get perfect scores we we're like it's fine yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just kill these people we're not trying to five star this shit yeah, so so we just kind of blaze through that. So I'm trying to get him like the next time it goes on sale, I'm going to get him Resident Evil Six, and oh, then, yeah. I'm not going to talk about it on the show. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I so already, seriously, I like, already covered it. Have, <laughs> you've said everything there is to say. Yeah, there to is it. everything there is. Just, there is nothing else to say about that game between everybody on this podcast no, talking about that game. Oh, for so. sure, for, for sure. I don't think we ever really got heat from anybody. I think that we just joked about it. <laughs> Yeah, like, I, I, th I think that we just I, joked, like especially like around the time that it came out, that it I just it I, I took so long to play it, and then by the time I finished it, somebody else had picked it up, and then you then you got on. So it was like it's well, probably I, the most discussed game on the show. Well, what I need to do is actually play the other modes, not the actual story mode, but all the other survival and you know versus agents and, and team like battle the, type whatever the hell the mercenary thing. Yeah, all that crap. Yeah, I want to do teen battle. Yeah. <laughs> you know where you fight all of them as teenagers that's yes. why there's no college students at the college level <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh yeah they they, they ding and rompid um huh okay so that was the first thing i played anything else about that one no mentioning resident okay. evil made me remember that there is a resident evil sale on and i'm buying yep, code, yes. i'm buying code veronica x for the playstation 3 and then i'm gonna get a digital copy of resident evil 3 nemesis so I've actually never played Resident Evil 6, so maybe I should pick that up so we can continue <gasps> talking about it. You uh, should pick it up, Ben, and I'll play it with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have the Prolonging PC now, the so magic. you can definitely play it. Yes, yeah. Yeah. You can play it, and I don't care that I've played it a million times. I'll no, play no. it again. It's fine. I, it's totally like a drinking game. I will... I will <laughs> <laughs> every time anybody says, you know, whatever... But it's fine. That's that's like Portal <laughs> Two for me. I've like yeah. I must have watched four or five people play that game and beat it in my living room. So yeah, it's fine. Hmm. So anyway, okay. what's what's your other game? My other game is Dream Revenant. Dream Revenant is an iOS game that is released by like the same um, production company, Bulky Picks, that did the Lone Wolf game that I talked about before. Right. And right. It's on iOS. It's a dollar ninety nine now. As opposed to Balky Picks, which made that Perfect Strangers uh, adaptation. It was like a telltale kind of thing. I don't know. Okay, so um, this game is made by one guy in the Unreal Engine. It is basically um, a first-person story-driven open-world adventure game where you're basically in the subconscious of a dying man. Like, it starts with you in a hospital bed and then it just kind of like goes into your subconscious from there and you have to piece together like everything that's going on you know like what what exactly your story as a person is and you know all of the events leading up to where you are right now in the hospital bed yeah and it is uh you know it's got like floating floating islands in the sky kind of thing going on and it's set in the late 60s. You are a cartoon strip, like a comic strip, newspaper strip artist. And your art is based on your own life, mm -hmm. but also haunted by your own life. Like very quickly, you find out all of the, you know, rough stuff that happened during your childhood. And say, for example, your best friend when you were growing up was a girl named Willa who was black and you were a white boy mm -hmm. and a farm town kkk your parents and a bunch of different stuff going on oh, with wow. the game and so like i don't want to say too much there is a lot to it that is all story story driven you know like the whole point of the game is to unfold all of the story bits so i don't want to say too much about that but it's very pretty it is 
glitchy, unfortunately, because it was made for like optimized for uh, iPhone four and five has not been optimized for six. I think, oh, wow. you know, so, I mean, like it hasn't hmm. been optimized. So there are glitches. I played through the entire thing in about an hour and a half or two hours, but even if there's a glitch that happens, a lot of times you can just like go to the map and then work back to the beginning and then it, it fixes the glitch. So, um, you know, like even if there are glitches, you can work around it and it's not too much of an imposition because it's not like you have to fight ba battles or anything like that to get around. Um, it has autosave features. So if you get to a point in the game, you don't have to worry about, oh God, it glitched out and I don't have it saved. Like, no, it'll save it for you. So you're uh... cool. It's voice acted, it's 3D graphics. Um, the progress is locked in certain areas where you have to um, explore and, and pick up objects to unlock different things. Like you need a, a skeleton key to get through a certain door or a door things made like of that. Bones. <laughs> yeah. And, like, like adventure game shit, right? Yeah. So it's adventure game stuff. It's like a big fetch quest, but it's all an adventure game anyway. So it's not. A bother to do all of that mm -hmm. um it has memorable music and it has you know like all all the times that you go through and you find bits of your comic which you do you know consistently throughout the game it tips you off as to hints as to where things are that you need to get to solve different riddles in the game and mm -hmm. see the rest of the story and um there are parts where they have like button tappy type of events where like you can use telekinesis or x-ray vision, but you have to, or super strength, but you have to do certain taps in certain areas, kind of Simon Says style um, at certain points. And there's not very many of those, but they do happen. Um, the thing that I like about it is that when it first introduces this mechanic to the game, it shows it like as if it were an ad for x-ray vision goggles or, you know, super strength pills or something like out of a comic. Does like a, so, like a Bioshock almost. Yeah, yeah, it's really cute. Um, so I liked it a lot. And um, in either case, the entire game, like I said, real short, $1.99. Even if there are some glitches in the gameplay, it's well worth the money. Anybody who likes stuff like Gone Home or... Any of the other kind of story-based walking simmy type games that we played, like even um, you know, like Beginner's Guide or things like that, you'd probably really dig this game as well. Hmm. Uh, just because it's it, at the end of the game too. Um, there are two endings, and you it's very very obvious at the end of the game when you have to make the decision. There are literally arrows pointing in the direction, and you have to walk in they, a specific direction. So like you can you can consciously choose which ending you want to go to and it shows you different areas and you get to choose where you want to go. And, you know, like it, uh, because it auto saves in order to see both endings, you have to go back and play the game again. But I don't see this as a problem because once you've seen all of the pieces because of YouTube the game, exists. <laughs> well, no, no, actually I looked on YouTube to see if I could find the other ending and I couldn't. So, um, <laughs> that that's not an option. At least not when I did my cursory uh, search. But mm -hmm. no, because after you've gone through the entire game, to go back and then pick up the nuances from all the things that are being said to you throughout the game, mm -hmm. it's well scripted. So like when you go back and you listen to it all again, it's really kind of, you know, more poignant and it hits you even harder when you are going through the second time around. So mm -hmm. I really actually think that it's definitely well worth playing both times to see both of the two endings yeah so but it's really an enchanting game and i enjoy it and i will probably go back and play it again so that i definitely recommend it the premise of a comic book um author who's kind of dragged into his own world uh here makes it sound like this is a grittier more psychological reboot of uh, cool world can you confirm or deny and deny okay. it is not um he <laughs> you come across Times where the comic pages from the things that you produced, you know, like you you get to pick up and read some of the comics that you have produced since you've been a comic artist. However, the world that's in your subconscious is not your comic world. It is your real memories and okay. experiences that you are going through. It's kind of more like if you ever read Jody Pickle's novel, The Tenth Circle, where 
Um, there are comic parts interspersed throughout the novel, and the comic parts relate directly to the experiences of the comic creator during the novel. Mm-hmm. So it's more like that than it would be a cool world or anything yeah. like that, because this isn't like um, the fulfillment of a fantasy or, or something crazy like that. It's it's just, you know, this is the reality. This is the kind of comic interpretation that you made for this comic strip for a newspaper, you know, so. But it's it's a really good game. And I think that you specifically would really enjoy it, Cole. Yeah, so. I'm curious about it. I'm a little bit scared off by the idea that it's kind of one of these neglected games or apps. Um, I, that... I don't really know that it's it's necessarily that it's neglected so much as it's one guy who's made multiple games and he's got to try to like get everything, well, still produce new stuff, but then also go back and fix all the old stuff. Right. And you know? that's one of the so. big problems with, uh, with, with, with the App Store. I'm not using neglect in the pejorative here because, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, if he's only one guy and, you know, like if this is a unity or unreal 3d exploration game, that's really impressive for one person to make and put out. Um, mm-hmm. and the fact that it got outdated isn't really his fault, but mm-hmm. that does get in the way of the ability to go back and play this thing to, 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 to my mind. And, you know, like I've kind of fallen away from my OS gaming a bit, like, especially since my iPad three decided to start shitting the bed with the lights on. But yeah. like, you know, I, I, I put this game on a list when you talked with me about it. Um, just like, Oh, I need to go, I need to go check this out once I get the new ipad pro that's coming out the nine or the 10 inch one that's going to be announced here Mm -hmm. in march um you know just as part of my four-year upgrade cycle or whatever Mm -hmm. um you know i'm gonna there's a bunch of games i want to go back and play but like if this isn't going to run on on 10.9 or on ios 9 that's that's a real bummer for me well here's here's the thing it's not that it doesn't run like i played through a large chunk of the game probably the first hour of the game without having any problems Mm-hmm. And then there were some glitches, uh, like you would go to a certain area, and after a certain series of events, sometimes the scenery would like you know start floating upwards for no reason, mm-hmm. and then you'd warp back, and then like warp back to the beginning, and then walk back, and then it'd be fine, and then that was the end of the glitch. I mean, like, is it is, so? It's not. It's it's, it's not, not. It's not stuff that will make the game unplayable. No, it's not stuff that makes it unplayable. It makes it where you have to, you know, like I said, work back to the beginning on the map and then walk back. But, like, it's not that far of a walk, and it's not that much of an imposition time-wise to where it makes it terrible and you can't play through the game. Yeah. It just makes it where, like, yeah, okay, be 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 aware that it's probably going to happen at some point, mm-hmm. and that you will need to probably work back on the map and then go walk back over there, and yeah. then it'll be fine when you come back. Like, yeah. I don't know. Well, that's that's good then, because when I when I hear glitches, especially on iOS, like when yeah, an it, iOS game glitches, like you lose progress in an adventure it, game, that just sucks. No, and it literally, because it autosaves, it'll autosave. Even if it autosaves when you glitch, it doesn't save the glitch. It just mm-hmm. saves the progress. Yeah. So if you were to, you know, restart your iPad and go back in, it's fine. Like, it yeah. doesn't, it doesn't mess are with Are these it. glitches even trying? <laughs> no, they really, they are really, like, I, okay, they, they exist. They are glitches. They are, you know, irritations, yes. But, like, I didn't have a lot of them. There were only, like, one or two points during the entire gameplay process of going back through this game, you know, three or four hours that I played it, you know, that I had any problems. And it was in set areas, set, you know, set series of events that led up to these things happening. It wasn't, like, you know, debilitating where I couldn't play the game. Yeah. But I, I don't want to recommend this game to you and then not tell you that there are yeah. going to be some glitches, you know? <laughs> So. Yeah, I mean, just if it's if it's run of the mill, like the world gets goofy Bethesda glitches, I'm fine. If it's you lose progress Bethesda glitches, then, you're not going to lose yeah. any progress cool. in any of this. You just need to like like I said, there's ways to work around it, mm-hmm. and it might it pause you, you know, cause you 15 seconds more of walking, but it's not going to you know kill the game, and it's not going to be so repetitive that you're just going to get frustrated and flip a table. You know, yeah. you're fine. Cool. Yeah, but it's a it's a really. I wish I could talk about the story more. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's but one of those. But it, it's one of those that it's it's a really good story. It's well scripted, and the music is is memorable and kind of haunting. Um, and it's it's a story that's like 
it's real. Let's just put it that way. Like it's not super saccharine, happy, happy, skippy, but it's not Mm -hmm. always depressed and whatever either. Like it's a nice balance of just, you know, real people dealing with real situations that would have happened to them had they been alive at that time and dealing with whatever. Hmm. So. Yep. Cool. Well, is that all? That is it. Awesome. Um, let's see here. Uh, Dennis, how about you? Yeah, I, I don't actually have a ton new. Um, I will, will say that uh, I beat the Magic Circle, though. Okay. So that um, is an absolutely delightful game. And um, without spoiling anything about the ending, I found myself very conflicted uh, uh, on things that I thought I was going to be very sure of. Yeah. Um, to the point where, you know, I kind of, you know, got, got to the end game scenario and kind of started down the path that seemed clear. And then like, as I was doing the things that, that, um, would have lined up with my original intent, I'm like, well, do I really (laughs) want to be, I I don't know. I feel so bad about that. Like, but oh, I just, and then I would like reverse myself and started trying to do the complete opposite. So, um, it the ending really really delivers and i think creating that kind of conflict um was it was uh, very well done on their part nice yeah so you know the 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 more distance i get from it the more i get like and it's kind of like not bummed out but it's kind of underwhelmed by the idea of the specifically the the, the two the two women characters coda and Mays. like they were just kind of cartoonishly presented and what i really wanted was more dr venture and specifically his <laughs> and, and specifically his his plot you know with his relationship to this thing and specifically coda kind of existed just to be a stock villain and a fuck you to fans and like i was really down for the way dr venture's story ended with it but um yeah like just like like how, how did you feel about them in the final kind of the final analysis interesting yeah i in I hadn't thought about it from that angle before. They are not necessarily Mm -hmm. one-dimensional, but do kind of have a thread or a theme. So it's um, they kind of are are meant to present a very specific point of view Mm -hmm. um, and are, are kind of all in on that. So... Um, I, I wasn't disappointed by it and didn't, didn't feel like they needed yeah. to be more. They, they serve the purpose of the story very yeah. well. They, uh, so I think it, maybe, maybe it comes down to, I think it was probably more a choice of focus yeah. on, Hey, what is the story going to be about? And how do I tell that story than of maybe neglect? Yeah. It just, they, 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 they rang a little bit hollow for me and like initially I was okay with them because they, because they kind of like represented, like it, it almost felt like they were like either like id or ego or something like that. <laughs> just I'm, yeah, some, I'm, some, some write, kind of aspect. You could write English paper on that for sure. Yeah. But like, like, yeah, just like they were, they were a different temperament or they were just kind of like representing something, but like their purpose in the plot was, it just, it, it ultimately felt like... <laughs> <laughs> they they were accelerating a destruction within this work that was going to destruct anyway. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> because because of who was leading it. So it was kind of like oh, I don't it, you know. Yeah, and then but I, I think they they also you know serve to shed light on in different ways the reasons why this the you know the creator is is so destructive or so. Yeah, uh, doomed to failure, mm-hmm. um, and and kind of the game does a great job. It did a great job making me do kind of a a one eighty of <laughs> just like this dick to having <laughs> empathy. Yeah, and I think it, it's so easy to go the other direction. Like it's so it's so easy to take someone and turn them into a monster. Yeah, I think it's a little bit harder to take a monster and turn them into someone that. Uh, that you, you care about you have the yeah, you have sympathy for definitely that final that final scene with him <laughs> yeah his his uh his even, filibuster yeah yeah even even then though i would say i would say that kind of felt a little bit staged as well like you almost it, I, don't, I can't remember if they make a direct reference to it but you almost feel like he had rehearsed it mm-hmm. um and like this is you almost get this inkle of, well, maybe this is what he really wanted. Or it's kind of been, he's, but you know, from, from that, then you get to, well, maybe he's, 
Yeah. He's given up on his real moment, and so he's fallen so far as to put all his mm-hmm. hope into this fake moment. Yeah, uh, and that this this horrible substitution for the real <laughs> thing pl- that plays really well with the with overall themes of, of yeah. the game. It just it, like so, the, the, the the way that it felt to me was like it, you know I've gone back and forth and like oh is he flailing right now is he just saying whatever will make people feel the worst. Or is this something where, like, he's probably rehearsed it, but, like, it's something that he said to himself while he was drinking. And right, he's, yeah. he's, he's just finally <laughs> able to get, because I've done that, <laughs> you, you know? And it's like, he's, he's just finally able to, he finally has venue for it. Punching straw men. A, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it doesn't, it doesn't have to make a great deal of sense, but, like, it, 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 it comes from a very, a very dark place. Yeah. yeah yeah and i think I, that that is the interesting thing is that they make you you know they go they get you to feel that sympathy for the character without necessarily redeeming him right right um because maybe you know you you see other characters that start out as the dicks and then you find out oh there's a layer below them but usually it's like oh explains everything now i can totally get it. and it's like no this guy's <laughs> still a dick yeah but i just i kind of get why he's that way now yeah like um, <laughs> like reason is neither justification or absolution yes yeah, <laughs> yeah. but uh, that that game is exactly as long as it needs to be oh, as well sure. yeah and kind of the twist at the end um would, uh, which i won't spoil <laughs> what it is, is it's just really really good yeah uh very very delightful I want, I, I want a whole game of that i well i kind <laughs> of I'm not sure if there is, and I just didn't see it, but I would love a way to see what other players did with it. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I'm sure there are some people who just went nuts. Yeah. Um, and I would be I would be interested in that. But that that is um play this game. Yeah, it's it's you know a, a very small investment of your time relative to video games. Yeah. Um and and totally worth it. It's real neat. Mm-hmm. Did you have anything else? Uh oh, one one other thing is I played Helldivers. Oh yeah. And Man, yeah. I wanted to like Hell Divers. And man, I did not like <laughs> Hell Divers. <laughs> give give a quick like two sentence explanation of what Hell Divers is. It's the clunkiest, most frustrating <laughs> twin stick shooter out there. Okay, so <laughs> twin stick shooter. <laughs> yes, a twin like twin stick shooters are supposed to be like zippy and and bullet hell esque, and just this one's just hell. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it suffers. I think it suffers before you ever get. To, the game proper it suffers from such interface blight um Mm. like they and they have so much text trying to explain it and it just does not help like there's there's something going on with like you know every everyone is contributing to like the massive macro world in some way by fighting these battles and they all kind of sum up across players and across consoles to push, you know, the the aliens in the macro universe out further, or you know, if you lose, they come in more. And eventually, if the collective gamer verse pushes out the aliens far enough, it triggers like a alien homeworld event, where then you have to go in in a certain amount of time. Enough people have to clear the alien world mission or something like that to where you win. And it just like so it drops all this on you. I'm just like, what buttons do I push though? <laughs> like, so, so you know, you, you get all that, and then it drops you into the map. And I, I literally had no idea what I even had selected on the map. Like, I was like, I don't even know where my cursor is or whatever. And so I just, like, hit X to it pick something, apparently. And then, you know, it, it dropped me into this area and was like, hey, the alien homeworld has been invaded. So it's like, great, I'm to the end game thing already? Like, is this... What? Like, I... I haven't even played a level yet, and I'm, this is the thing that you just told me happens at the end. But maybe I just joined at the wrong point in the cycle, or I, I didn't know. And then so then it gave me a, a choice of all these missions that like went up to twelve difficulty. But then there was like most of them were like in the five to seven range. But I found the one that was like two and tried that. Um, but again, I have no. I don't know why it was a twelve point scale. I have no idea what any of those mean. Um, I go into this thing and just get demolished and either um, either they just straight up don't balance for having less than four players. Okay. Or they, they fall way too far into disempowerment because in this, in this, I, what I, I think was supposed to be an easy level. 
The difficulty rating was easy, but apparently it was in this like end of the alien world event, and I don't know. But I just I just repeatedly died and died and died, and would feel like overwhelmed by enemies that rushed me from off screen. Yeah. So they would be off the screen as like these dog enemies that chase you down. They kind of charge in so fast that I didn't really feel like I had time to react. Uh, and then they had knocked me down. And you, when you're knocked down, you have to like mash the X button to get back up. Um, and by the time I'd gotten back up, I'd lost all my health and died. So again, I, I don't know if they just assumed that you were going to have four players and it doesn't get any easier if you have less than four players. So I just, I just need right. to join with people and all of a sudden everything will make sense. Or I don't know, like there's an upgrade system. So I don't know if they're just expecting me like, Hey, you're supposed to feel this way right now because your weapons are all bad. And maybe as you upgrade, you know, you can, you can get better. But then I, like, I didn't, I didn't even live long enough to get any materials to upgrade with. <laughs> like, right. so I just, it just, I just, it, felt bad from beginning to end unfortunately i will say there's a tough learning curve on that game where you definitely can't go to the planets that are outside of your level um so but maybe I, it's I just i don't a, know if i was outside of my level or not like I, I have no idea what i picked or why i picked it or where yeah. i was supposed to go are are there any <laughs> level one planets <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> probably. So I, it's been about the- six months since I played the game, so I can't remember what the difficulty curves like. But I know I remember learning very quickly that you couldn't go too high outside of your level. That you, you need to kind of work your way up. Some that might be the issue, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But then again, then it goes back to the interface blight where I, I did not feel equipped to choose something that was appropriate for me. Yeah. Even after a ton of explanation, I had no <laughs> idea where the right starting area was. I mean, it's, it's what it sounds like is they weren't quite sure what order to put the game and the meta game in. Yes. And so yeah, they just gave you it. both mm-hmm. of them at the same time. Yes. <laughs> when a better experience probably would have been, but what, what, what It'd be fast all to say like, "Hey, just to like I call it calling for a tutorial or whatever." Like, there's a way to do it, but like, drip the information or put you in situations that like don't require you to understand something that is outside of the moment to moment. Like, get mm-hmm. like let you let the moment to moment breathe for like a second, yeah. b- Before, but <laughs> b- b- before you actually make it like you know put put the burden of picking your next challenge or put the burden of you you know like what somebody else is doing on you as a player yeah it it could have stood to be on rails for just a little bit longer um and i think there's also something to be said for giving you you know just a couple easy wins up front yeah like you know i'm all for the dark souls smack you down and make you feel even dark souls has tutorials yeah you know like (laughs) you gotta yeah give me give me something to work off of um so that was it was that was frustrating and i I don't know if i'll I'll go back and try it again i which and like Co-op, co-op game. I love those. I want that. I want to go to there. Um, so it's just, it's so disappointing um, to to have it just jar against me so strongly. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's me. Is, is well, that this sucks. like the second week in a row that you're bitter about something? Well, the first, like the, like last week, it was totally like it was, it was not the game's fault. Like this, like it was, yeah. it was an infuriating situation <laughs> where he had been looking forward to a game for three years and he can't yeah. play it. Yeah. yeah. For all I know, XCOM 2 delivers on all its promises. Yeah. I think, yeah, I'm, I'm never not salty anymore. But at least it's like you don't want to make the same mistakes uh, over and over again. You don't want to be salty about the same thing over and over again. So at least, right. at least I'm, I'm uh, salty Jazzing about it different up a little things. bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully, uh, but you know the the magic circle in there, so that that was a, that was good all around. So I can I can balance it a little bit. Hopefully next week I will have nothing to be salty about. Yeah. Huh, Ben? How about you? What you uh, what, what what do you have to bring to the table? So I don't think I have any games that other people haven't played before. So it's all like re- not retro, but like old stuff. But uh, the new game for me is Pony Island, oh, yeah. which I played last week. <laughs> yeah. That was, I mean, it was pretty fun. It was pretty bite sized. Yeah. Um, it's definitely like a five dollar game, I think. So, I thought it was enjoyable for what I played of it, but I probably wouldn't play it much longer than I did. Did so. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I I don't know how much there is to say about it. I mean, there's definitely cute <laughs> moments in it, 
And uh, there's like a few moments in the game that are just as good as like some Metal Gear Solid surprises, I think. <laughs> um, did, did, did they get you? Yeah, they did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's funny is I on a couple of different occasions I've had I've had other people falling for that. Um <laughs> I've had that affect me. Mm-hmm. If that, <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's kind of like, oh yeah, okay, I, I understand. Yeah. So <laughs> but 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 yeah, you definitely it uh you, it pooked you. Yeah. The message I wrote was Internet Explorer is not that bad. <laughs> You monster. <laughs> oh. Huh. Well, yeah, it is definitely a uh, a $5 one sitting game. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um so that's Pony Island Ben. Uh what else have you been have you been playing? Okay. So I got a couple more on Ducket. Uh the interesting one is Knights Old Republic. Uh I picked that up on Steam just cuz I was kind like of I, I know you don't have any familiarity with that game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not like your favorite game ever or anything. I finally am ready to dive in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it's it's more just to go back and see what the game's like compared with my memory of what the game is cuz it has been a long time since I played it and I know I have a lot of positive feelings towards it. Um so it's interesting to go back and see the c- controls like even the little things like the camera control system that they have seems so outdated since it's like uh, pre halo system almost <laughs> it's just um, it's just left and right like rotate you can actually look up and down yeah there's there's two buttons to move backwards and forwards with your characters and then there's a a button to rotate the camera right and left yeah and so <laughs> it's it's weird that you have like half the ability that you would typically have with a, a modern game um but that aside the music is still great in the game the character building system is still good I had forgotten, though, that of the classes you pick, there's cross-class skills. Mm-hmm. So if you're trying to max out like your skill abilities, it's almost impossible for you to do it. Like they, You're guaranteed to block off some skills that you just won't be good at. Um, so that was something that I completely forgotten. I don't know if they carry that over to Knights of the Republic 2 or not. Um, but yeah, so I haven't gotten far at all. I'm only about maybe an hour and a half in. I got to the first bar. I started playing Pazak. So that's kind of... Oh, gosh, yeah, I love yeah. Pazak. Yeah, ah, that's so pretty good. fun. Which Saves I coming. hardcore remembered that being Sabic, which is the actual thing in Star Wars. Yeah, that's that that that's uh that's how Han won the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, and uh, and then I was kind of disappointed when it was not that. <laughs> but it's so fun. It's so good. It's, 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 it's space fun. blackjack. It, it's it's deck building space blackjack. There's nothing mm-hmm. not to love. It's mm-hmm. like it's like what's the um little monster game in Final Fantasy IX? Oh, oh! It's like Tetra Tetra Master yeah, or something yeah, like yeah. that. The far inferior version to uh, to Triple Triad. Yeah, yeah, but that that kind of where it's got that just a little bit of deck building built into it. Mm-hmm. God, yeah. I can't wait to play Final Fantasy VIII again. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so trip trip down retro lane <laughs> might be in order for all of us. Yeah, is it is, um, it, is it holding up? I mean. I mean, so far it's fine. I mean, again, like the the writing is really good. The I mean, the graphics are fine. You know, they're good considering that they're you know like going on fifteen years or you know twelve years old. Yeah. Um, the uh, the music is really solid, and like the ambient noise is really good, <laughs> um, which is like a weird thing to compliment a game yeah. on. I mean, but, interesting. Like, Star Wars things always have really good sound design. Yeah. It yeah it. It, it's just amazing like how that completely transforms the atmosphere because like if you were to go into the cantina and it's just like silent or whatever <laughs> it's a completely different experience you know what i yeah. mean so it's just it's just amazing how much that that changes the feel of the game um you, you should yeah. uh you should check out humble has a star wars bundle up i saw that and i <laughs> was i slightly gritted my teeth having bought the game <laughs> like yeah. a week before that went on sale but that's well, okay oh well yeah um <laughs> But I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna go on from there if there are no questions, since it's kind of I mean, ground well treaded. It's it's mm-hmm. it's coder. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> like, I I I know it. I'm just I'm just curious. Like, at what point does a game that you love kind of stop? Do you stop deriving value from it when you replay it? Yeah, I'll I'll be curious to find that out. Um, I went with the rogue class, and I I'm not specializing in any uh, trait. I only did one point. Uh, move so I think I have five of the six skills at 14 mm-hmm. but nothing's like greater than that so yeah 
it's kind of like a well-rounded person. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Like like the rogue scoundrel class is that that is not a not a preferred build for Coder One because you don't have the uh, the weapon finesse, right? Um, you you get critical strike, which is fine. Uh, I think flurry is what the middle class has, and some people prefer that to the critical hit. Mm-hmm. As far as like what what your special weapon strike is, um, yeah. but I don't think that they're at too big of a disadvantage. Yeah. Um, you can only do light armor, but that's not a huge deal because right. Jedi robes are light armor anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm so think, yeah, so, I'm thinking specifically of like two gives you the gives you the feat that lets you add your dexterity modifier to uh, lightsaber attacks as opposed yes. to your strength. Yeah, you don't have that in this one. Yeah, so I think dexterity was the only thing I held off on putting points in because of that in this game. Yeah, so I have high strength, have high constitution, wisdom, charisma, and intelligence, and everything. Um, or it's all at fourteen, but dexterity yeah. is the one thing that I didn't put anything in. Oh, I just noticed that uh, that could or two. Um, is is a uh, compatible with Mac now? That was not oh. the case a year huh. ago. Oh, so hmm. maybe maybe we can trade off here, Cole. I'll play Coder <laughs> One. You can play Cater Two. Uh, <sighs> yeah, <laughs> I wish. I just, I, I, yeah, I wish I could. All right, mm. but I'm gonna jump from Coder because I have two more things I quickly want to talk about. Okay. Um. <laughs> so I've also been playing uh, Rocket League a whole bunch. Uh, I've been playing with Mikhail on the show. Yeah. Uh, oh, goody. That's been fun. Um, he's pretty pretty solid player, so that's yeah. that's good. Um, and I mean that that is a really good game. So if you are on the fence of that, it's a really good multiplayer game. So I'm I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I've gotten I've definitely gotten my twenty dollars worth of that game because I think mm-hmm. I've put over like forty or fifty hours in it already. Nice. So Ooh. I yeah. guess I should I guess I should play it with you sometime. It's fun. Maybe. <laughs> And then, then you can get frustrated with me. <laughs> no, it's it's not that bad. It's you know, it's a team game. It's it's whatever. But uh okay, and the last thing I have to talk about is the witness, which I think I've already talked about beating it and being a little bit upset with the ending, how it kind of resets your progress. I think yeah. I mentioned that. Yeah. It has the ability to do that. Mm-hmm. Um so I went back to the game that I had restarted and uh I've gone through and I'm trying to kind of hundred percent it or find more of the different puzzles there. Um I did, however, so I found one really good secret of the game that um, that I was very satisfied with um, because there's apparently two different endings to the game. And so I found the second ending naturally. Um, yeah. But then I started looking up how to get some of the environmental puzzles um, because there's there's straight up panel puzzles in the game, which are the, the game proper. But then mm-hmm. there's kind of naturalistic puzzles in the game, which is trying to find certain like puzzles that are hidden in the environment yeah environmental and, puzzles yeah i guess that's yeah redundant but uh yeah some of those are i do not know if you would be able to find them on your own given that there's i think maybe like 30 to 50 of them some of them are pretty ridiculous like kind of braid esque where you have to like wait an hour to do something yeah so so I don't feel completely ashamed of looking up how to do some of those, <laughs> but I feel slightly ashamed for looking up on how to do some of this. But yeah. um, there's only uh, there's and, only so much. Like you're still gonna be you at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. well, the other thing too is it's like the game very much feels like a puzzle box. So I'm I'm kind of interested in knowing, um, basically what all the solutions are and basically like how much depth there is to the game. And so I think I have most of it figured out of like what all you can do with the game. So I don't know if I'll do everything in the game or not, or if I'll just drop it, but that's pretty fun. Nice. Huh. Cool. Cool. Yeah. You've had a, it's, it's been a momentous two weeks for you, at least a busy two weeks. A lot Mm -hmm. of bite sized games. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But that's it. Cool. Well, I'm going to round us out. Uh, So my biggest thing that I've played over the past week is it's kind of a similar situation to yours, actually, Ben, where you played Kodor, a game that Mm. you are, you know, like is one of your favorites. Um, I uh, played and streamed Silent Hill. Yep, I was there for some of that. (laughs) You were. Yeah. Uh, So I want to do more streaming. Um, this has been a good excuse to uh, solidify my setup, which I talked about in a backer blog uh, for the Patreon backers. Um, but to get that set up so I can play Silent Hill, 
um and uh, i put that i'm talking about the original playstation version um and kind of like stream it and then also put it on youtube as like a twitch export so that anybody who uh wants to listen to our silent hill 3 episode because silent hill 3 is so intrinsically linked to silent hill one or the outcomes of that game that it's kind of like hard to use it's like it's just, it's just one of those things where like you need to know um to a certain extent so i i made that available um and it was a lot of fun to do that stream you can go to uh, youtube.com slash duck tv um and also in the slack channel uh or in the slack team uh i created a channel called streamy weemy uh dennis's <laughs> suggestion uh that is uh <laughs> that is a place for people to discuss streams announce their streams and things like that i'm not sure what i'm gonna do gonna do next but like man silent hill holds up it's still yeah, it's, it's still here. it looks so good like the middle the middle third of it like after like alcamilla is a little bit it's it, it's kind of saggy specifically with like the sewer level and kind of stuff but like the art direction and that, that game is so on point it is so ah, just it looks good in spite of itself and in this kind of quarter or this you know we're, we're at the tail end of a winter where we've just beat our heads against the limitation the limitations of this era of games specifically games for the playstation it's wonderful you know to go back and play a game that yeah it's it's still kind of clunky but they designed it to the limitations of the of the system in in a really like intensely satisfying way um, and you look at this and you see kind of the, kind of the foundations of, of, of everything the series would become and it's still super spooky. And the sound design is ridiculously good. Um, yes. yeah. When I was <laughs> listening slash watching, I was mostly at the same time painting. So I couldn't stare at the screen all the time, but to hear all the creepy ass noises and stuff. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah all right cool so like i'd look over every once in a while and be like whoa what the fuck (laughs) yeah were there any scares that you'd forgotten cole a couple uh specifically in the school uh relating to the locker room i had yes i had (laughs) forget i love the enthusiasm with that i forgot i I forgot when i replayed the game that was one i forgot too and it scared (laughs) it freaked me out yeah well it's funny because i associate that scare with alien so much (laughs) right and so (laughs) and so like uh, you can forgive me for getting for forgetting that this game that i really love ripped off a movie i loved wholesale (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but like specific like specifically the way that the that, that the quote-unquote real world version of that puzzle or that set piece interacts with or contrasts with the uh the fake or the the uh, yeah. the, the other world part yeah. of it i mean this is a this is a 17 year old game in the spoilers real- <laughs> dude <laughs> yeah. in, in the real world you know you, you're, you're exploring the school and you go in and there's a there there's a locker room and you hear like a like a rattling in the locker and you open it up and there's a like a cat scare as it runs out and then you know like leaves the room and you hear a monster get it it's like oh well that's that's a bit of a bummer because a cat died but you know like you, you got me like it's it's a jump scare in the purest possible way when you come back in the in the, in the nightmare version of the world the alternate uh uh, mid- midwich uh middle school or uh, elementary uh you, you the, the locker is rattling but you open it up and the inside is just completely caked with blood yeah so uh you know it's gonna be like, oh well well that like the causality of that doesn't make any sense and as you turn around and walk out of the out of, out of the room a body falls out of a locker <laughs> that you pass by <laughs> <laughs> no big deal <laughs> yep so it is kind of like yeah it's like okay if you expected this if you expected the uh you know the, like the scare to be repeated it's setting up that expectation and then uh like utterly subverting it and then dropping a body on it <laughs> <laughs> yep oh gosh pretty uh pr- pretty good um so it's it's been fun i want to stream more because i feel like even over the course of that playthrough i got better at it um i got better at kind of knowing what uh what to talk about i got knowing when <laughs> i got better at knowing when to shut up which is a skill <laughs> that you know it's it's hard to come by um in life and, as well as in streaming exactly <laughs> specifically for me um and for a lot of people but yeah i, I have trouble knowing um, but uh, but yeah, I'm I'm curious. I think uh, up next, after I get a little bit further ahead on uh, network assignment, you know, like homework, I'm gonna try and either do uh, Until Dawn or uh, Echo Night Beyond. 
Um, but uh, but yeah, I'd like to just continue doing some horror streams since I can't actually dedicate the time toward uh, doing like hex crank. Like it'd be. Are fun you to do are that. you familiar with both of those games? Have you played them before? Nope. You oh, should do okay. until dawn, and you should let me know when you do until dawn. <laughs> you see, I, okay, so I, I get the whole like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, it's funny to watch me be scared on camera thing. I, the thing I've found is that it's very, very difficult to stream your first playthrough of a game. Yeah. At least for me, because my natural tendency is to like try to figure it out. And so I get really silent and concentrated because I'm like, what is going on? Or like, so I, I think I, I do much better with um, games or, you know, just even if it's not replaying content directly, like interfaces that I'm familiar with. Yeah. You have to get really good at thinking aloud, I think. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and the thing is, is I've had people who, okay, I haven't been officially streaming it, but I'll be on, say, a Google Hangout again, and I'll have somebody who's on the other side and watching me play a game and going, oh, shit, you know, like screen sharing with them so they can see what's going on on my screen, and they, they're they just like, oh, my God, you know, because they're laughing at me, but uh, at the same time, like, enjoying what's going on on the screen, so, you know, like, it's it's fun to do a, a first playthrough that way, I think. Hmm. Especially since, like, I, I'm very, very reactive to things that I play. So <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is that thing? Oh, my God. You know, and, and so that's fun. <laughs> yeah, if that, I could, that is a I skill. Would, yeah, if, if, if I could, I would stream more. But, you know, uh, limitations of my Internet connection. Yeah, it's um, that's pretty funny. I uh. I don't know. I, I I kind of want to try a game that I haven't played because most of the stuff that I've streamed has been has been stuff that I know. You know, going back to Haunting Ground or when I did the Silent Hill thing, like I've been able to like speak to it with some authority. I want to try and react to it on the fly. Um, yeah. And like until dawn seems like a good a good way to try that because Ben, correct me if I'm wrong, but it feels like a game that would you know it seems like a game that like feeds itself to you in a line. So what do you mean? So there's not an awful lot of like, well, I'm just not sure how to solve this puzzle, or I'm not sure where I need to go next. Like it is very, it, it seems very much like scene by scene. It it's very in the style of Heavy Rain. Yeah. So, and, and the same way that Heavy Rain would be interesting to watch, like the choices that people make, it would be interesting to watch you play until dawn. Huh. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I will let you know when that happens and, uh, okay. you know, like just watch Twitter or something like that, but I'll, I'll send you a text if I do it. Um, you know, it'll pro it won't be like this week. Like I pretty much like marathoned, um, Silent Hill, but gotcha. <laughs> yeah, yep. no, it was, it was, it was a good time. Uh, and, uh, I have set things up to make it as easy as possible to do that whenever I want to in the future. So, <laughs> um, yeah, the other thing that I played and I'm sorry to keep us going so late, but this is a really cool game that You're like a, a lot of people are talking about. And, uh, I want to throw in my, my hat as saying like, holy shit, this is amazing. Um, super hot. Oh, what yeah. is it? I, okay. I know nothing about this game. Yeah. So I've seen rave reviews. So <laughs> please. <enlighten. laughs> so this is the super hot. It's a game that was originally designed for like a seven day FPS, uh, game jam kind of thing. And uh, they have taken this, I think they backed it on, kick, they, they, they funded it through Kickstarter, and they've built it out into a full game. Um, and it's still, at least so far, very much hues to that initial proof of concept that they did, which is, this is a first-person shooter where time doesn't move, or more accurately, it moves very slowly um, until you move. So things stand very still. They're, 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 they're next to um you know uh like like frozen in the amber right until you press w and walk forward at which point the bullets move the people start aiming you start reloading everything and uh like even like uh looking around and moving uh causes things to move forward but what it turns it into is this is like a first person like hotline miami order of operations puzzle where you have to really really understand and commit to every single move that you're doing and figure out the order in which you're supposed to kill these enemies in these situations that they that the, the, that the game presents to you so like mm -hmm. if you've got somebody like ready to wail on you with a bat and somebody is about to uh is about to shoot you with a gun let's just use that as a, as a simple as a simple example you punch the guy with the bat and then you have to hope that you can grab the bat from him before the person um shoots his bullet 
But even if he shoots it, you can step out of the way and then throw the bat at him, grab the gun from out of the air as he uh, as he drops it because you hit him with a bat, and then shoot him and then shoot the first guy that you attacked who initially had the bat. And then the cool thing, and something that is incredibly incredibly rewarding is, uh, especially as the, the situations get more complex, is that um, um, after you complete it, it does this Meat Boy kind of thing where it shows you your perfect run. Oh, that's awesome. Right? So what it looks like is, it's like a, it's like a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie from first person, where <laughs> you are just like... You punch this dude, you uh, grab the bat from out of his hands, you throw it at the guy, grab his gun, shoot the first one and shoot the second one, and then you're done. And so, like, it's 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 very slow and deliberate and plotting and very much puzzle game-like. Now, this isn't a unique... Nothing I'm saying about this, about this game is unique, by the way. Uh, it's very puzzle game-like, uh, you know, in the execution. But in the final analysis, what you're actually doing is executing these very highly choreographed, improbable action sequences that it then shows to you. So like a little, a, a five, what's, what's five seconds when they play it all together? What you just described, how long in terms of actually it's like, doing it? Like two minutes. It oh, so e- even when it's slowed down, it's not incredibly long. Right, right. So I, 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 this isn't a, this isn't a Dennis Furious situation where like <laughs> I make a move and then I'm up and I'm pacing left and right, like you know just agonizing. Yeah, because time move, moves forward when you pace left and right. Yeah, that's right. I'd be <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, but but yeah, so it's you know, it's like it's like two minutes. Like the like the individual levels are super bite sized. But even over the course of like the you know like hour and a half probably that I've played of this game, um, it keeps on adding new new kind of stuff. Like either different things in the environment that you can throw or different weapons. Like it takes you from like stuff that is all like um alleyway ambushes with people with guns down to like you're in a pit fighting ring and you're like fighting off a bunch of guys and then the the arena opens up and you have to figure out your way out to taking out a guy in a bathroom and then going out into the bar and clearing them like it's a whole bunch of these like little disparate uh uh, kind of scenarios that it expects you to work through and each of them adds a different little gameplay wrinkle to it and i'm not sure where the bottom of that's going to be interesting it has a really cool visual style it's very sparse. Um, all of the enemy characters are like these featureless red, almost like poser kind of characters. Um, and, uh, you know, your arms are visible in the screen most of the time. The world is mostly white with like little black details and all of the uh, weapons you can inter- interact with are black. So it's it's very stark. You know exactly what's going to happen. It's like the shooter version of the Mirror's Edge challenge levels. Mm hmm. To, like to an extent um but that doesn't like bother me like that low level of detail it makes it feel like stylized and i just listened to an episode of idle weekend where they talked about it like as this super cyberpunk kind of thing and uh and uh that is kind of wrapped up in this meta plot like it seems like every game now has to have you interacting with a fake desktop which it's it feels like kind of like concur, <laughs> concurrent evolution, but there's a, but there's this idea that like you're hacking into this game to find the true version of it in a Pony Island, um, uh, her story kind of way. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm not so much interested in that until it gives me something to really be interested in. I just know that there is a button that I can press that gives me more cool shit to do, and it makes me look like a fucking god <laughs> <laughs> when I do it. Yeah, Neil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so this is really cool um it's it's kind of costly uh for an indie game um which i i guess is just a way of saying it's more than ten dollars therefore lazy dev greedy dev no it's it's like 20 bucks or 25 bucks or something like that i don't know how long it is i really don't want to look up and see how long it is i don't want to be able to anticipate when this experience is going to end um but mm. uh i really enjoy it it's uh it's super great and it's it's really conducive jala like to the kind of play session that you described liking doing like this really kind of like bite-sized kind of thing or i think you mm-hmm. know it's it's something that'll fit that fits well into somebody's life who doesn't want to invest in a two three hour session you know yeah 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 so yeah i want to i want to open up the open up the floor like did i <laughs> guys did i do a good job explaining that no I, i'm just I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just curious like if you guys have heard about this because like i heard about it a, a while ago and i thought th- i thought that it went the way of spy party um but uh but no it's like an actual thing and it's really good <laughs> so like is there anything else you're curious about it looks like you're killing the guy from etchachrome <laughs> <I could> be- <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, the that that uh that PSN puzzle game. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, it, it it looks like you are uh, you you are trying to not get killed by an intelligent cube. <laughs> yeah. So is is this the kind of game that could lend itself to like player made levels or kind of weekly new challenges? Like how if if you gave someone the tools, how easy do you think it would be to create new scenarios for you to try to figure out? I don't know because all the ones that I've seen have been pretty tightly designed. They introduce new enemies at very specific points. Um, and, uh, like the, the geometry of a stage, the layout of the places that you're kind of like wandering around in definitely factors in to what it's asking you to do. Um, so I couldn't say, uh, but like a provisional, yes, I could totally see people doing that specifically because of how sparse the visuals are like a user made thing with a limited tool set would not feel too terribly out of place if it was designed well. Very cool. Yeah. So that cool. may be a way that they can extend value. Like, I don't know if that is uh like a, a plan for like steam workshop kind of, uh, kind of thing. Like I haven't looked into it, but like it, it, it seems possible to me. Yeah, no, oh. this is the, like I said, I, I knew nothing about it. And then I just saw like red people and high scores. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, is, is there a scoring mechanism in it? Uh, no, high scores is in high review scores. Ah, okay. Yeah. 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 No, I was thinking like, wow, if it's scoring you and I didn't, I didn't even see that. Yeah. <laughs> because like uh, th th there, there's a game that I really like uh, that came out in like the 360 gen generation. Uh, have any of you played the club? No. Nope. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I've, well, I haven't played it. I, I know what you're talking about, though. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, it's a it's a game that was made by I think it was like a ah, that, that that's way too on the nose. I don't think it's the Midnight Club people. It might be the Project Gotham people. But uh, it's it's like c consider of a racing game and Tony Hawk was mixed up with with a shooter. OK, <laughs> so all it's, it's a it's a third person shooter and they're, you know, like the, there are levels that are essentially like a loop and it's scoring you like on style points as you go through and take out as many of the people as possible. Uh, there's like not really a campaign that I remember so much of anyway, like it, but it's like burnout almost too, where you're just going through and trying to perfect your run and like get your combo up by executing these perfect action scenes. It feels very much you know, if not like similar in pacing, because this is obviously so much more deliberate, but, uh, but, it, but, it, but it feels of a kind in a way. It's like stunt driver. Yeah. Yeah. Or stunt man. Yeah. That's one. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is, uh, this is great. <laughs> I don't know how much more I'll have to say about it unless there's like, a uh, um, and, and, unless there's a huge like time where it opens up beneath me, I'm like, whoa, this became something totally different. But like, <laughs> I can totally see like investing in a stage or two uh, every couple of days until I'm done with it. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, that's what I've been playing. Any other questions about those? No. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about Slashy Souls, and I do not intend to. For lack of Ever? playing it, or for lack of having unique things cold to say about it? shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> no, people are people are saying, "Hey, talk about uh, talking about uh, yeah, talk about it on Bonfire Side Chat." And it's like there's nothing to say. It's a trifle. Hmm. <laughs> you guys want to button it up? Buttons. Buttons. Let's do so. All right. Thank you, everybody, for listening in. This is, uh, yeah, it's it's been a little bit of a longer episode. I'm not sure what it will edit down to, so I'm going to keep this admin section short. Uh, on a personal note, I want to direct your attention to both uh, twitch.tv slash duckfeedtv uh, and also uh, youtube.com slash duckfeedtv where you can find that Silent Hill playthrough that I did. I would really love to continue doing stuff like this. So the more activity and the more interest that I get in that and the more people saying like, hey, you should do that, uh, the likelier I am to come back with an Until Dawn or an Echo Knight or something like that. It'd be cool if I could uh, fit this into a habit. But those are the places to go and find those. There's the usual stuff, duckfeed.tv uh, slash news and uh, the, the the Patreon and the Facebook and all of that. Uh, but I think most of all, please tell friends about the show. Um, that is a huge way uh, that we can spread. We don't really advertise. And uh, we are a general interest video game show that is mostly about video games. <laughs> um, but uh, that is a great way for you to help us out. Is there anything that I'm missing? Uh, keep yeah. being awesome. All righty. So, uh, yeah, I've been Cole Ross at Cole Ross on Twitter. 
I've been Dennis Furia at DFuria on Twitter. Always gelatin in places. Yeah. And, oh, Ben? <laughs> Merkelizer also in places. <laughs> <laughs> and until next time, listen uh, for a title. Uh, does anybody have any they want to uh, throw in? Mon air and cold shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got wiggity rack, mon right, air, and reverse prison. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis? Uh, I just had um, cold shoulder. <laughs> there's, there's Panzer Shrek, too. I also, well, I, yeah. I written down early on, um, where is it? I gotta pull up my notes. Uh, Drew Barrymore is a Pokemon, but that's kind of one that <laughs> requires inflection. That's kind of clunky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here. You guys got most of mine. Uh, so I got Wiggity Rack, Covalent Mon, Mon <laughs> Mon Air, uh, Reverse Prison, Balky Picks, and this <laughs> one's just hell. <laughs> I I well, like see, Mon Air thing, a lot. Well, the thing about all the Mons is we did the you know a quarter to a third months before so yeah. you know like that's kind of related sounding anyway even though it's totally different hmm is there hold on i gotta i want to send an image <laughs> <laughs> do it in uh do it in the slack if you can oh, no. all right never mind it's i have it on my other computer but it's a nicholas cage jigglypuff hybrid but if there's <laughs> any way we can put con air hair on it <laughs> then I think that would be golden. Yeah, Jal is right, and that thought occurred to me with the with with Mon Air. Um, so that leaves uh, <laughs> I'm pretty fond well of Panzer Shrek, uh, but uh, Cold Shoulder <laughs> was the one that popped up the most. Cold Shoulder, okay. Yeah, Cold Shoulder, it. it is. All righty. Cool. Well, it is time for me to get my laundry out of the dryer and then go to bed. All right. That sounds like important business. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Great. We'll sleep and launder well. <laughs> I will try. <laughs> uh, thanks so much, everybody. I will talk to you soon. All right. Yeah. Peace. Bye. Night. Night. Bye.